series called Under Pressure. And in this series, we've been looking at some of the things that bring added pressure or stress into our lives. We conducted a short survey with you as to what things bring pressure into your lives. And some of the areas we talked about were things like finances, health problems, job stress, relationship problems. You know, the stress can build and build, and then we start feeling the heat. And as Christians, we want to learn how to handle the pressures in life. Last week we mentioned how now we are living in a post-Christian culture, and Christians are feeling the heat as they try to live out their faith in a culture that seems to be drifting farther and farther away from God. When we're under pressure and feeling the heat, I think we can learn from the example of godly people and how they handled the pressure when the heat was turned up in their life. There are certain character qualities that we can develop in our lives that will help us handle pressure regardless of where it's coming from. How many of you remember the Eddie Murphy movie called Beverly Hills Cop? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. How old is that movie? Do you remember what year that came out? 1984. So that movie is already 35 years old. The producers wanted a theme song for that movie, so they hired Glenn Fry of the Eagles. The Eagles were a band, but they were broken up at that time. They paid Glenn Fry $15,000 to record a song for that movie that was called The Heat Is On. Anybody remember that song? It became one of the biggest international hits of the decade. It made millions and millions of dollars. And they just paid the guy $15,000. It was a throwaway song for the movie. And the words of that song say, the heat is on, it's on the street, inside your head, on every beat, the beat's so loud, it's deep inside, because the pressure's high just to stay alive, the heat is on. That became a big hit. So when you hear someone say, the heat is on, that expression really isn't that old. It's less than 100 years old. It comes from the 1930s in America during the gangster era. And it meant the cops were after you. Then later it came to mean that you were being interrogated or grilled by the police. And today it's an international phrase, and it simply means that I'm under pressure. I'm feeling the pressure of a deadline. I'm feeling the pressure of stress at work. I'm feeling peer pressure, or it's finals week at school, and I'm under all sorts of pressure. So there's a lot of different kinds of heat, but today in this story from Daniel chapter 3, we're going to see three guys who literally felt the heat of a fiery furnace. We looked at Daniel's life last week. Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are no longer teenagers. Now they're in their mid-30s. King Nebuchadnezzar is the emperor of the Babylonian Empire, which is the largest empire in the world at that time. He's the most powerful man in the world. And what often comes with great power is great ego. And this leads to the next test. It's a test that you and I are going to face when the heat is on in our lives. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all these officials came and stood before the king, uh, stood before, stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted out, People of all races, nations, and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people... Whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshipped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So here what we have is the king is on an ego trip. He builds this 90-foot statue of himself. And we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who have been appointed as governors. They've been serving for about 15 years. They're Jewish, but they're serving as governors in Babylon. And the king says, any time you hear this royal orchestra start playing music, you need to immediately drop everything, fall to your knees, and worship this image of the king. doesn't matter if you're fixing a car, baking a cake, or changing a diaper. You drop everything so you can worship the statue. 
And if the people needed any extra motivation, he had a blazing furnace built close to the statue, so anyone who refused to bow down would get thrown into the furnace. Now, verse 8. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to the king, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, that decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you've put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you've set up. So, tell me this. Why did these three guys refuse to obey the king's command? Everyone was obeying the king and bowing down before the statue. Why didn't they just go along with the crowd and give in to peer pressure? Well, they refused because it would break the first two of the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 says, You must not have any other god but me. And then verse 4 you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or image or anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. We should remember that we can be impacted by the sins of our parents. Anybody know why they were in Babylon in the first place? Israel had stopped worshiping the one true God, and they were worshiping idols. And God had warned them for many years. And finally he said, you know, if you don't stop worshiping idols, I'm going to let you be taken off to Babylon. And sure enough, that's what happened. Their nation was attacked. 25% of their nation is taken away as hostages to Babylon, which is modern-day Iraq. So the whole reason these guys are in Babylon originally as prisoners of war is because their parents had broken this very command. So when the king hears that three of his governors are refusing to bow down, he throws a fit. Verse 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage. So the king clearly has an anger management problem. He ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I've set up? I'm going to give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? So the king is basically saying, we're going to have a little God contest. We're going to find out who's really God. Is it me or is it the God you serve? And when... I throw you into the fiery furnace, who's going to save you? I have all the power, so let's see what happens. Good luck. So as we look at the rest of this scripture, I want us to look at the question, how should we react when the heat is on? You're going to have stress and pressure in your life. If you don't have it right now, then it's going to come sometime in the future. It's just a part of living this life as a Christian. So this scripture shows us how we can react. Number one, don't worry about defending yourself. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. So when you take a stand and do the right thing, you're going to face some people who are critical of you. They may question your character. They may question your motivation. When that happens, don't worry about defending yourself. Just quietly trust God to take care of your attackers. When you're in the fire, remember that God's a whole lot better of a firefighter than you are. If you watch the news and you've seen these terrible fires out in California, the firefighters are putting in long, hard hours trying to fight these fires. It can be a challenge trying to find enough water to put out these fires. Remember, God has an unlimited fire hose. He created all the water in the universe. He's a better firefighter than you are. When the heat is on, you don't have to worry about defending yourself. Number two, remember that God has the power to save you. It really doesn't matter what kind of mess you're in right now. 
It doesn't matter what kind of crisis you're facing. It doesn't matter what kind of fire you're trying to put out in your life right now. Just remember that our God is all-powerful, and he certainly has the power to save you. Verse 17, they say, If we are thrown into that blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. So that's quite a statement. We know our God is able to save us. So when you find yourself going through a major fire in your life, it's so good to know the promises from God's Word. Because those promises give you hope, and they remind you of God's power. If you don't know the God's promises, that's kind of like not knowing what's covered by your insurance policy. When you don't know what's on your insurance policy, then you worry. Is this covered? Is this covered? But if you know your insurance policy covers something, you don't worry about it. If you know that God says He's going to do certain things in your life, you don't worry as much. There are 7,000 promises in the Bible. Here's just one of them from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43, Do not fear... For I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's a powerful promise to hold on to. Number three, be willing to declare your loyalty to God no matter what. In verse 17, they said, The God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But now look at verse 18. I I just love this verse. Verse 18, they say, But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. I love that verse because they have such an unshakable faith. They're declaring their loyalty to God no matter what. They know God can save them, and they believe God will save them, but even if He doesn't, they will remain loyal to God. And that's the attitude we need to have. They had an unshakable faith in God. What about you? What about me? Do we have an unshakable faith in God? Are you willing to stand up for God no matter what? The time may come in your workplace when every person chooses to go one direction and you need the courage to stand alone and do the right thing. The time may come when the entire crowd is angry and out of control, but you need to stand alone and show love and forgiveness. The story continues in verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. There's that problem with anger management again. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. And then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up, threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. So these three guys had the courage to challenge the most powerful man in the world. The king claimed to be God, and he wanted everyone to worship him. They refused to worship him. So the king's face became distorted with rage. Maybe you've seen that happen at your house where your mom or dad got so mad that they looked like they were going to pop a blood vessel. When you let your anger control you, you realize you start doing stupid things. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Why does he do that? Human beings are going to fry at a normal temperature of a fire. So that's really just overkill. It's not necessary. You know, maybe he secretly worried that the God of these three Jewish guys might come through for them. The king doesn't want to look bad, so he orders the furnace to be seven times hotter than usual. As the story continues, we see what happens when we trust God in the fire. Let's see what the king does. Let's see what God does. First, God will walk through the fire with you. 
Verse 24, But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. So as you feel the heat in your life, remember that you will never, never, never be alone. God's presence will always be with you. Over and over again, God has promised to be with us in this life, no matter what trial we face. Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you need to decide, is God a liar? Can you trust Jesus when he says he will always be with you even to the very end of the age? I don't know about you, but I want to have an unshakable faith just like these three guys did. And then number two, your unshakable faith will point unbelievers to God. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed. Their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Verse 27 said, Not a hair on their heads was singed. Their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell like smoke. How could that be? If I just sit around a bonfire, I end up smelling like smoke. Remember this. Their faith was not only unshakable, it was unbakable. Why would you groan? That is not bad. (laughs) So you often wonder how you can have a positive witness for Jesus Christ. Well, you know, one of the best ways you can have a positive witness is to demonstrate an unshakable faith to the world. The world is going to sit up and take notice when they see you and your unshakable faith that you have as you face whatever trial you're facing in life. In verse 28, this unbelieving king ends up saying praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command. They were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their god. There's no other god who can rescue like this. The world is watching to see how you're going to handle the challenges that you face in life. And when they see the way you handle pain or how you trust God when the heat is on, That can be such a powerful witness and testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ. I've mentioned her before, but for me, a modern-day example of this is Johnny Erickson Tata. She was a very physically active teenager, but when diving, she misjudged the shallowness of the water, and she ended up paralyzed from the shoulders down. As a quadriplegic doing two years of rehab, She experienced anger, depression, suicidal thoughts, and religious doubts. However, during occupational therapy, she learned to paint with a brush between her teeth, and she began selling her artwork. And then she also writes that way. 
although now her writing uses voice recognition software. To date, she's written over 40 books, recorded several musical albums. She starred in an autobiographical movie of her life, and she's an advocate for people with disabilities. Think about what a typical day is like for her. She cannot dress herself, bathe herself, or brush her teeth. Every day she has to lie in bed until a person comes to help her. And yet she continues to have this amazing ministry to other people who have disabilities. And she continues to be a powerful witness for her Lord and Savior. She's had an extremely difficult life. But then in 2010, she announced that she had been diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. She underwent a mastectomy and chemotherapy. Her treatment proved successful, and she was declared cancer-free in 2015. In November of 2018, she was diagnosed with a malignant nodule on her chest, her chest wall near the site of her original cancer. Radiation treatments for the nodule proved successful, and in July of this year, she announced that she had once again been declared cancer-free. So her life has been extremely difficult. And yet she still stands firm for Jesus Christ. Her unshakable faith has led many, many people to faith in Jesus Christ. And as I was simply just looking for a picture of her, I ran across some of her quotes. This lady is just so amazing. One of her quotes was something like, I thank God that I'm a quadriplegic because every morning it forces me to jump into the arms of Jesus, my Savior. I just am like, wow, what an amazing, amazing, amazing testimony you can have when you face a trial in your life. I mean, she is such an inspiration to me. And anytime I start feeling sorry for myself, I just, how dare I, you know? So again, you can have such a positive witness in your life by the way you have an unshakable faith where God gets the glory, just like she does. As we end this message, I want to focus in on the last sentence of verse 29. In verse 29, this unbelieving king stands back in amazement and he says, there's no other God who can rescue like this. That statement's still true today. There's no other God who can rescue like this. So who are you looking for to be your rescuer? Who are you looking for to be your deliverer? When you find yourself in a crisis, who's going to save you? Are you trying to save yourself? It's not going to work. Are you looking for the government to save you? Good luck with that. There's no other God who's going to save you. God knew that we needed a Savior. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why we celebrate, celebrate Christmas. For unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. If you didn't need a Savior, then God wouldn't have wasted his time in sending one. And Jesus would have never had to die on the cross for your sins. But there's no way you're going to get to heaven without a Savior. We all need to be willing to say, I cannot save myself. I need Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. And then we need to be willing to stand firm for our God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. There's so many people you have used in the Bible and in modern day history who have taken a stand for you, and they're just an inspiration their faithful witness, the way they face pressure, stress, everything, and yet they were unshakable in their faith and they gave you the glory. And Lord, I just pray that that's going to inspire us to take a stand for you as well. We don't know the next challenge that's going to come into our lives, but I pray we will be strong and that it's not our strength. It'll be your strength shining through us. So Lord, may you receive the glory no matter what trial we face in life. We thank you that you're with us in this life and that you're going to usher us safely into the next life. We give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.